Hey everybody, welcome to Round the Twist, episode 296. It's May 24th, 2017. I'm back. <laughs> Still with not a lot of knitting progress, just because, yeah. Thank you everyone that commented over on the Ravelry forum for your kind words about, yeah, losing crafting mojo, I guess. Uh, hopefully it's going to be just a phase, we'll see. Um... I have crafted a little bit, but um, mainly been doing a lot of reading, a lot of more house stuff that I'll get into later. Uh, so let's let's get started. Grab your coffee, grab your tea, whatever it is, and let's get going. I have Hawaiian Delight coffee from San Marco, and I'm getting to the bottom of the bag, and it's making me very sad. So. First thing, oh sorry, uh, first things first uh, that I have on the needles is my friend Sarah's Dublin Bay socks. These are, do I have a sock blocker? No, of course I don't because that would make things too easy. Uh, first sock's been done for a while. These are the Dublin Bay Socks by Ryan Morrissey. It's got this lovely bit of lace running down the side and then an eye of partridge heel that I think is going wonderfully with the pattern, which, or with the pattern, huh. the pattern's going wonderfully with the yarn, which is the Cyborg's Craft Room. It's her Asacolate base, which is a 7525 superwash merino and nylon blend and the colorway is called I cried aloud at night and it's this gorgeous gorgeous color that it's kind of got all these different hues this is probably the truest it's looked because it usually looks so blue I don't know why it's so awesome today but hey I'll take it but you can see there's like little rusty bits and purples and blues and greens and everything coming through but the eye of partridge heel just really seems to pop for some reason, to my eyes anyway. So I'm knitting these up on a US 1, a 2.25 millimeter needle. The second sock, I was at eight out of nine repeats on the leg. I finished the ninth repeat. So there's the second one. And I have begun the eye of partridge heel that is one measly repeat into it. So I've done four rows of that. Meh, I also had to, because of how I'm doing this, um, when the pattern was written years and years and years ago, um, he wrote it, uh, the designer wrote it for to be knit on three needles and knit off onto a fourth. So you're knitting on double points with your sock in a triangle. So like all of your instep stitches would be on one needle and then the everything on the back, the front versus the back of the leg, would be on two needles. And I didn't want to do that. I did it with my first pair. And I think even when I made my first pair years ago, I adapted it to knit on uh, using five double points versus four. So I adapted it again, uh, just fudged around where the lace work bits were. So that meant when I came to doing the eye of partridge heel, or doing the heel flap at all, I had to shift um, where the start of the round was, which is, I like knit three extra stitches and just scooched everything. Highly technical, I know. Um, but I'm ready to, I'm working on the heel now, it's just, I just need to sit down and do it. It almost seems like the heel flap, I don't know, takes forever for me. That's the part that seems to drag the most. But I got a little bit done on Sarah's socks. They'll hopefully be done for her birthday, end of July. Uh, second thing that I worked on is the stained glass blanket, take two. I did actually work on it this week. I did not get all those centers put on. I made a valiant effort, but one of the kids, my son, Gabe, decided to end nap time early. So while I was making marvelous headway, let's see, where am I? Did I add on? I think I added on over here. I did. I added the light grip. No, I added three. No, two. Two. Two, two. Sorry. I'd added these two. 
which is, um, I think carbon dating is this one. And this is the pale lavender called KMBFLA. Kiss my big fat lavender. Mm -hmm. From Blue Moon Fiber Arts, Socks That Rock. And then, I can't remember this. It's a really pale light gray. I'd have to look on. Oh gosh, okay fine, I'll look for, just for you all. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Here we go. Uh, it was part of my, the color affection shawl that I knit for my sister-in-law right before I got married. So that's back about five years ago. Oh my gosh, five years. <laughs> no, no, no. There it is. Winter Solstice is the color. This lovely pale, pale gray. And then the last one right here is probably one of my favorite colors from Tina. It's just so rich and wonderful. This is the farmhouse colorway. And I really need to get some more of this and make myself a pair of socks because the pair of Breaking Heart socks that I know this were gifted to my mom. So it's coming along slightly bigger. A little bit. It's blocking me out of frame when I hold the whole thing up so you can see it. So that's evidence it's getting bigger. The pattern is Juggling Hexes by Wendy Harbaugh. It is a free pattern. However, it is um, not a PDF file. It is a blog file. So it doesn't save. No, it does save to your, I think it saves to your Ravelry library, but it's not as a PDF. So I ended up having to type it up as a Word document. Um, so I'm using scraps of Socks that rock both light and medium weight because they're close enough. It's a blanket. It's gauge isn't super duper important. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm using an F hook for that, a 3.75 millimeter, just a Susan Bates hook that I got in a set. So that's everything. That's all I have on the needles. Uh, so let's move on. Very sincere. House stuff. Um, we got Gabe's room finished, painted, that very bright green that I talked about last week. And we taped off and painted Tara's room yesterday. And it's like a shade lighter than Pepto-Bismol pink. <laughs> uh, baby girl loves some pink, so uh, pink it is. And it it's... It's kind of right, that pink that's right between cotton candy pink and Pepto-Bismol pink. If those two had a baby, that's the color of Tara's walls. It, it, we got it from Lowe's. It's a Valspar color and it's called Utterly Pink. And it's definitely pink. Oh my goodness. Um, I had to go through the room and do some touch-ups this morning. Hubby took care of most of the painting last night after the rest of us had gone to bed since he was flipping his sleep schedule back to night shift for his next couple shifts. And... Uh, the garden survived the snowstorm that we had. Oh yeah, by the way, we had a snowstorm last week. It's the middle of May. It's actually late May now in Colorado. We had a snowstorm that probably dumped close to eight inches of just snow. And we're not even up in the mountains. We're down below the foothills. So I know some of my coworkers are up in the mountains had between three and four feet of snow. Yeah, glad I live down in the valley. Um, so <laughs> by the time the snow was coming down, I didn't have a chance to go out and put a blanket or anything over the plants. They look a little peaked, but not too bad. They should survive. They're not wilted over. Nothing got crushed, which I think if as heavy and as wet as the snow is, I think if I would have put some like put a sheet or put a blanket over them to protect them from the cold, I think they the weight would have landed on the sheet and just broken everything down. So they'll bounce, they'll bounce back, right? It, it'll be fine. One of the pepper plants is still budding and flowering, so I'm happy. Uh, and yeah, we've got, we're going to have house guests for the next four or five, five days-ish. My parents are coming out to visit. They haven't been out to visit in quite a while, so I'm expecting them within the next hour or so which is why I'm trying to, sorry, I feel like I'm rushing today and I am a little bit, but uh, that's because I need to get this done before they get here so I can let them in the house. I'm not comfortable being in the basement while the kids nap upstairs and having 
the doors upstairs unlocked. That's just too many years living in Omaha. I, I can't break myself of it. Um, so we're going to do one, let me go back, one question from the Any Questions thread. Try to keep this a little shorter this week. Okay, so the question this week is from Murphy419 over on Ravelry, who is Shani from Richmond, Kentucky. So Shani, 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 Murphy419. Here's your question. Uh, it says, I'm a fairly new sock knitter and I think your socks look fantastic. Thank you. Uh, when I kitchener the toe, the beginning always looks weird. Do you break your yarn before you start to kitchener or do you just get to the last stitch and then start going thanks in advance of the podcast? Uh, I do not break my yarn. So I was really hoping to have the second sock done uh, so I could show you guys, actually show you live on camera how I kitchener. I might do that as a little tutorial um, when I get to that point. So I don't know what you're following to kitchener. Kitchener always tends to look a little funky the first few times you do it because you're just learning. Um, you need to know how much tension to pull or how much to pull the yarn to put tension. Do you squinch the stitches? Do you not? It's, it's, it's something that will get better with practice. So, oh, it's really hard to do without having um, something to show you. Uh, just make sure you're following the, the basic Kitchener stitch, knit, purl, purl, knit. Those are the four steps. How <laughs> The four steps, that's three, four. There's four steps in Kitchener. However, you do have to do a setup stitch. So I've, got, I've been doing it so long and I've knit so many pairs of socks that it's just ingrained in my head. And so it's always, you go through the first stitch like you're going to knit. So you cut your length of when you get done. You have your stitches left on your toe on two needles. You cut your length of yarn. I usually go about 18 inches or so just to make sure I have enough plus enough to weave in at the end. Um, it's supposed to be knit, purl, purl, knit. So I skip the knit and take off. Skip that to start off because you're set up. You run the yarn through the front needle. The first stitch on the front needle as if to purl. And then the first stitch on the back needle as if to knit. There's your setup. And then you can start following the Go through like you're going to knit and pull that stitch off. Pull the yarn through. Purl on the front and then purl knit on the back. I'm doing a terrible job of describing this. I'm so sorry, but um, without seeing what you're doing or being able to stand over your shoulder and help you, the best I can do is tell you keep an eye out. Um, when I finish this sock uh, for Sarah, I will have hubby hold the camera or I will figure out some way to jury rig it. So. Uh, you can see what I'm doing with my hands when I'm doing my Kitchener. And I always get like, when I finish, I always have this weird little like rabbit ear sticking out. But the thing I've discovered, uh, when I thread my yarn to the inside of the sock to weave in the end, I just give it a little extra tug and that extra little blip, whatever loop thing just pops right to the inside. And that's help, helps me get a good finish on my socks at least. I hope that helped. I really don't feel like it probably did very much, but keep an eye out and I will post a tutorial about it, okay? Thank you guys so much for sticking with me. Um, I'm going to, oh yeah, and I cut my hair off. <laughs> I just, I felt like something different and I went into my hairdresser last week and went, yeah, I'm sick of it. Do something, I trust you. So it's all, she did this short little bob for me and I'm still getting used to it, but I love it. So far, huh. this is just air drying it this morning. I didn't even do anything like I combed it and that's it. So kudos to Julie at the Beehive in Windsor, Colorado, because you are awesome. And I have found my new hairdresser who I will stick with and follow her wherever she goes. I have far too many instances of having to break, uh, either break in a new hairdresser or having disappointing haircuts or dye jobs because they don't listen and Julie listens. She's amazing. So I'm going to let you guys go on that note. And until next week, happy knitting.